Thank you. Uh, appreciate everyone sitting through it. Maybe uh, this won't be that bad. Try to keep everybody awake. <clears throat> what I want to do is want to cover, first of all, the live CD, kind of how that's progressed, where we're at now, where we're moving uh, with that. Um, but the real thing we want to talk about is the fishing tool, Lunker. Uh, we want to talk about the payloads, what it can do, and when it's going to get released. Uh, so I'm going to try to move fast. If I'm going too fast, just tell me. You hear me? Just tell me that I'm moving too fast. All right. So back in 2006, uh, we developed the first OWASP live CD. It was called Lab Rat, and it had uh, most all of the OWASP tools on it, Web Scarab, um, Web Goat. <laughs> didn't didn't really work perfectly, but it was a start, right? Um, it was built on Morphix and Nopix technology, pretty stable, nothing too fancy. Where it's moving now, if, if you've noticed, there's a 2008 project, and these guys, Matt especially, is doing really, really good. I mean, they spent a lot of time on it with the graphics, with the tools, uh, and really focusing on application only. Uh, kind of where we were with the lab rat, it was a little bit of everything, right? So it had a little bit of RFID in it, it had a little bit of wireless, a little bit of network. Kind of like Backtrack, but you know, Backtrack, it's got so much support and so many people using it, it's really hard to keep up with. So anyway, um, Matt's doing that. I want to hand that off, and uh, we'll be no longer supporting that, the old version. So uh, what we will be doing is moving to a VMware image with these tools in it, but that's really built for this phishing framework. So it's, a, it's an environment that as soon as you load it up, if you want to customize it, add tools, you know, bam, there it is. But the thing with that is it's right now it's about 4.6 gig, so it's not, a, you know, not quite as easy to download as the live CDs would be. But I think once I purge some uh, Linux packages and things like that, we'll try to, you know, we should be able to get it around to a couple gigs, hopefully. Um, so anyway, that's kind of where we're at, where the old CD's at. We're moving forward with the new CD. So on the lunker. So first of all, what this is, it's a spear phishing framework. Um, so you can kind of think of how Metasploit. Metasploit mostly attacks the network. So it uses network as the attack vector. What we're doing uh, is we're using email as the attack vector, or the transport to carry our payloads uh, into the client. Um, go to next here. So if when I think about the attacks that we've seen over the past couple of years, um, we've moved up, right? So way, way back in the day, say to me, I mean, around the 90s or something like that, internet wasn't around. I mean, if you want to steal some computer stuff, you either break in, you walk out with it, or, you know, you mean you dialed up over modems, you know? So as, as we've gotten, you know, as technology has grown, um, we've, how I see this is we're moving attacks right up the OSI layer, right? So uh, network, you know, that was the thing for a long time, uh, IIS exploit and the stuff, right at the network. Um, and then we've gotten into the application attacks, right? So then the SQL injections, cross-site scripting. Now, now that, you know, maybe around 2000 or so, we started seeing the network get a little more secure. So the guys weren't just pulling up Metasploit and just, bam, getting in that way. So they actually getting, you know, started to see a little proactivity, started blocking that a little bit. So what I, what I think it's done, you know, is it, it forced attacks to move up. So, um, you know, we, the application, obviously, that, that's been a big target for the past couple years. Um, but really what I see now is what I'm calling, you know, the layer eight, the human aspect of it. Because if you break down all these attacks, uh, the most of them require some type of user interaction, right? You have to get them, you know, to click on something or, or look at this or do this, do this. So you're, you're interacting directly with the user versus the, uh, so much the application or, you know, the network. So this is what I call the vertically aggressive testing methodology. Um, this is how I like to see a penetration test or uh, say tiger team type test done. Uh, is you start out, you know, you start with your passive recon, looking on Google, identifying emails, things like that, understanding your client, uh, and, and then you move up to the more active stuff. So you start poking the network a little bit, seeing, seeing what's out there. Um, you identify vulnerabilities in the infrastructure, you know, you exploit them. 
and, and that from there down, you know, is the network stuff. So then we start getting into the application stuff where it starts to make the curve. So we do application recon, we identify the inputs, we identify the versions, um, we come up with a plan or a threat model where the attacks are. Um, and you see at the very top up there is the social engineering stuff. So this is kind of like, you know, moving up from the bottom to the top. So this is how this is how the tool or, or how this type of spear phishing works. I mean, this is the thing is it, it doesn't require like I'm not a programmer, you know. I've got all the books and I can I can put some samples together and make a little stuff work. Um, but this, I mean, if you know how to use front page, you can do this. I mean, you pull down PHP Mailer from pretty much anywhere and bam, you're, I mean, you're good to go. But anyway, um, the, the first step in this is the attacker. Well, is, this is the passive phase, so this kind of matches up with the other. Uh, the attacker first will search the internet and pull down uh, emails, information about the target. Once he understands the emails, that, that, you know, those are what's going to be attacked, right? So after the emails are grabbed, he goes out and he starts poking around the site trying to identify any type of, uh, anything that grabs credentials, right? So the big thing is like OWA, VPN, Citrix, anything you can think of that has a username, login, and password box that clients interact with and they're, and they're common. You know, they use them, they're comfortable using them, they know they're there, it's not just something popped up. So then, we know the emails, we know the potential attack vectors here, so maybe, we'll just say OWA, or I won't, just, we'll just say webmail, try to stay away from vendors. Um, so once that's done, what the attacker does is he sets up his own copy of that. And this is easy, it's just saving it. So you go to the web page, you save it locally, you put a little PHP or, or some kind of back end to it that grabs the credentials, and you host it up on your server. Uh, then once that's done, it's tested, the attacker sends out the email to the users. Hey, you know, this is John or, or uh, Bob from Tech Support. We upgraded so and so over the weekend. If you would just log in and make sure that your account's working like it should, or something like that. And, and, and that's a spear phishing example, but we'll, we'll cover other payloads. But basically, uh, you know, what you're trying to do it's a predefined message, right? So uh, NLP, neuro linguistic, whatever how you say that, programming. Um, y you want to cause a reaction from the user, and that's how you craft these emails. All right, so you sent the email out to the users. You said, okay, uh, I'm, you know, I'm on the road. I, I got to get my email access, so I need to check in and make sure this works. So, bam, what do they do? They log in to your, uh, your attack server you have up somewhere on the Internet. I mean, this, this is the difference, and this is why your blacklisting and your other methods uh, don't really work with this, because this server you put up, it's some server, you know, sitting out there you send a million emails to. It's just something that's been sitting there, you know, you just brought it up, so it's just got an IP address It's not really known by anybody. So anyway, they click on it, it grabs it. Um, the credentials are sent to the attacker, and the attacker logs in to the website. I mean, it's very simple stuff, but it's, this is the one most effective attack I have ever done uh, in penetration testing. I mean, we've done a lot of, you know, a lot of uh, network exploits, a